whole human life is just a heartbeat here in heaven. Then we'll all be together forever. <laughs> yeah. How will I find you? Found you in hell. What do you think I could find you in Jersey? <laughs> Hello everyone, so glad you could join me. I'm your friendly neighborhood astrologer, Matthew Curry. Welcome to Conquer the Universe with Astrology. Uh, a lot of you may be new here, and if you like what you hear, if you're listening on Blog Talk Radio, there is a button you can push below to receive notifications when new episodes are out. If you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe. And if you're listening on iTunes, uh, have, you, have you read your terms of service? They're nuts. Anyway, whether you're new or not, welcome to the show. And uh, happy Aries season to everyone. A lot of good energy out there. We're approaching the Sun Square Mars aspect that I was talking about in my previous podcast. Good energy if you can put it to use. Now, I'm particularly pleased that you're here today because when I came back to podcasting, I wanted to do something a little different. It wasn't going to all just be astrologers talking about astrology. I wanted to take real people and demonstrate how a reading can really help, how it can really give you some clarification, help you make sense of life, and and just actually to show you that it flat out works. And uh, I've got a guest on this evening. Astrology works for everyone. It, it, it's a real thing. It does real good, uh, even if you happen to be famous. And uh, my guest today is no less than medium, psychic, author, television personality, generally great guy, John Edward. Can't tell you how thrilled I am he decided to be on the show. Anyway, uh, no more messing around. Uh, oh, other than, of course, if you'd like information on a reading, if you'd like your free ebook, 12 Signs of Love, send me an email at astrologyshow at gmail.com. And if you are looking for a reading, you know, why not try asking for the John Edward discount? We'll see what happens. Anyway, here is my conversation with my very special guest today, John Edward. I have just a few questions here based on your birth chart. And uh, I know that your life is largely a matter of public record, so I'm not going to be doing stuff like, you know, saying, oh, well, look at this. You've got uh, a Leo Midheaven and Sun in Libra. You should be on TV a lot. And then you say, oh, you're Nostradamus, okay? That's not how I'm playing it here. I've kind of taken some of the stuff that's in the public record and looked at the transits happening around it at the time and come up with some other questions for you. Like, for example, sure. um, now, as I understand it, you weren't particularly born thinking you were going to grow up to become a medium. And uh, you probably didn't pay the whole subject matter a whole lot of attention uh, during the early early years of your life, or did you? No, actually, you're spot on. I, I did not pay attention to it. Um, my My mom and her side of the family were very open to anything psychic-related, tarot, card readers, psychics coming to the house to do house parties. A little bit with astrology, they didn't really resonate with astrology. They were more into like people doing like psychic work. Um, I, I only made fun of it, to be quite honest. Okay. My dad was a New York City police officer and a career military guy. So I would say up until about 15 was, you know, between the ages, when I became more consciously like cr- critical thinking, I would say between the ages of like 10 and 15, I was somewhat of a detractor. You know, so was I. But now, as I understand it, and by the way, someone looking at your birth chart at the time, uh, you've got a whole bunch of Libra going on with you. Uh, And it's in the 12th house, which is great for psychic and medium type work. But honestly, uh, someone looking at your birth chart that age would have been more likely to suggest that you become a dance instructor. Okay, and you you were... You were at one point, yeah. Weren't you? I actually, well, kind of, but yeah, I, I was really like astrology would say that. Well, yeah, because I mean, all of the Libra, uh, Leo, Midheaven, it it does indicate a, a a career in the arts or something like that, or expressing yourself, or having a TV show, that sort of thing. Right, so, that's where it went. Yeah, and then and then things went slightly astray. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not too right. astray. Um, now, I know that you got, uh, the, the, my understanding is you got a reading at around the age of 15 that told yep. you this was going to happen. Now, um, it, 100%. That's, that's kind of a bomb to drop on a 15-year-old, isn't it? But what, so, but as far as um, 
what happened after that. Now, I don't think you got this reading. Someone told you this was going to be happening, and then I don't think you dived into it right away, did you? Well, I, 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 I think I did, actually, because oh, okay. she gave me information. Yeah, she gave me information that, you know, I say the reading was broken up into three parts. The first third of it was she told me I had highly evolved beings of white and gold light that were ready to work with me and that I was going to change the way millions of people looked at her field. That was her opening statement to me. So, you know, to me, she sounded like a crazy lady. Yeah. The second part of it, she got my attention because it really did apply to me. But that, that skeptical, uh, you know, the tennis player in my mind was serving back everything that she was saying because I was like, yeah, well, I could apply this to like five other guys in high school. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, it applies to me, but I could, you know, kind of look through that lens and say, you know, this could be Scott or Mark or Jeff or Mike. Like it could have been any one of those people as well. Yeah. The last part of the reading, that's where she kind of like was the, like right on the bullseye. She got into like personal stuff that there's no way possible she would have been able to know unless she was with me, mm-hmm. and unless I actually confided in her, because there's nobody that was at my grandmother's house that day could have tipped her off. There's nobody that she read before me that could have extrapolated that information and you know given it back to me. And I remember the feeling, and I say this publicly, I felt violated. Mm-hmm. I felt like this woman like walked around my life, and I did not like the way it felt. So, and then she gave me outcomes, and here's the part that really, really shifted me. The outcome of one of the things that she showed me was kind of preposterous because it didn't make logical sense with the information that I had at that time in my life. But there was a major shoe to be dropped within about a week of that reading. Mm. And what wound up happening is when the shoe dropped, it, it literally, I had no choice to go, this woman called this. Like, she said this. Like, she talked about, you know, this girl that I was interested in, and she talked about who she was going to wind up with and gave me the, like, the, the, the kind of connection to it. So it was like this really weird, like, whoa, okay, how do I make sure nobody ever could do that to me again? So mm-hmm. out of that, you know, I use the, the, the uh, analogy, if you've ever been robbed, the immediate thing you want to do is put an alarm system in. Yeah. I wanted to find out, like, how do I put, an, I guess, an energetic alarm system in? And after doing, after going to the public library and starting to do research on, at that time, in 1985, the occult was the, the, the section, I was embarrassed to check the books out. So I literally, after school, every single day, went and sat and read on the floor of the occult section until I like, made it through every book that they had. That's when I knew I, I had been always doing this. I just didn't know what to call it. So there's a lot of revelations that happened in that, that library. Yeah. And that's and I would say that was in that was like within a month of the reading. Now, what I find interesting astrologically about the timing around that is that now, like we said, a lot of Libra in your chart. It's in the twelfth house, and the twelfth house is it has a lot of associations with psychic stuff, among other things. But uh, it was eighty four and eighty five when Pluto first entered Scorpio, and that's your first house, and that's uh, how you interface with the world, how people see you, that sort of thing. So obviously, although this reading had an, an effect on you, it's not like you walked out of there and immediately said, well, I'm a medium, time to get a job doing that, you know. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> far well, from it. So there would have been a, a stretch of really, at least into almost your mid-twenties, when you knew this, you were working on it, you were working with it, but it's not like you were going around with a sign around your neck telling people that. And I think I saw an interview... Uh, somewhere recently where you said something like there's more people coming out as psychic than gay. Um, yep. <laughs> so your experience from about 15 to, let's say, 25, what was that like? Because a Pluto transit, can it can really rewrite uh, how the world sees you and how you see yourself. But it's not always comfortable. Yeah, it, it wasn't. So, it wasn't an easy journey. So um, how did you get started? I will tell you that I might... So here's what happened. My reading happened in 1985, specifically August of 85. It was supposed to happen earlier, but there was a, a shift in her schedule, and she was a very, you know, she's a very busy psychic, and she didn't do house parties, so in order to make this happen, it had to be moved to August. So I kind of felt like August was pivotal. So August of 85 was when this yeah. kind of took place. Um, I immediately, after having my socks were not, you know, blown off, wanted to understand more of it. Now, keep in mind, my mom was going to psychic fairs 
all the time on Long Island. She would like be going, you know, once a month she'd be finding a fair somewhere. Um, and she came back and I had, she knew what happened in the reading. She, I told her that this woman was like, you know, very accurate and told me that I could do this. And my mom said, is it something you would ever explore? And I said, well, I kind of feel a little hypocritical because I've made fun of all these people for all these years. I go and, you know, now, now I'm going to go explore what they're doing. And she said, that's how you learn. Mm -hmm. Um, so she went and got, uh, two or three other readings at fairs and she brought back the, brought, brought me back business cards of other psychics. Um, and she said, you know, maybe pick one of these and go see if they pick up on your abilities. So I went to a woman who did room casting. Okay. I wanted to do something that was different. And I went to this woman who did room casting and she was looking at the rooms and she said to me, maybe the second or third sentence, like, wow, do you know how psychic you are? Now, when she said that, I immediately went to the place of, wait a minute, like, is this like an opening line like all psychics use? Like, do you know how psychic you are? Yeah. And now take my class. Like, I was waiting for the, you know, and now take my class type thing. Um, and I don't want to come across cynical. I try not to. I'm not cynical, but I'm highly analytical and very skeptical. I have OCD. Good. So it's like I process information in a very um, kind of really sharp way. Yeah. So I like, I'm like, like sitting there just like listening. And, and she said to me, um, yeah, she's like, this is your path. This is your life. This is like a, you know, she's like, I'm so excited that I'm, you know, that I'm able to be a part of this. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> like, you're not part of anything. Like, I'm not even a part of this. Yeah. And she said, you know, are you, she's like, are you already doing readings? And I said, you know, I said, I've been working with like tarot cards and reading for my family and cousins and friends and just trying to understand the, you know, the symbolism of stuff. But nothing seriously and she laughed and she goes what's the reaction been and I went good and she said okay, okay. Um, and then and then she literally got up from the reading and went to the phone and called this woman and said um, I'm sitting with the young gentleman that you need to meet and I thought it was really really unprofessional I mean seriously like mm. I'm in the middle of she's in the middle of doing a reading for me she got to go make a phone call yeah. So I was like, okay, this is like not weird. And she called the woman who ran the psychic fair, and she said, "I want you to meet him." Oh. So, within, I don't know, I, I, I it's you know, thirty-three years ago. Uh, within a short period of time, I wound up going to Staten Island and meeting this woman Sheila, who ran the psychic fair. And she said, "Can you go sit at the back table? I'll I'll come talk to you in a few minutes." And so it was such an odd place like why so she went and put me at the back table and she said can you read for me i'm like now and she's like yeah i go well i said okay and i did and she said great she goes up you know she goes sit right here and next thing you know this woman walked up to me with a little ticket that had my name on it and her name on it and i was like she's like are you john and i go i am and she said to me um i guess i'm your whatever you know 12 30 and i looked at her and i went I felt 30 for what? <laughs> and she said, to read me. And I laughed and said, oh, no, 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 come with me. And I walked yeah. back to the front and I said to the woman, Sheila, I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm hiring you. That's okay. literally how the reading started. <laughs> when I started working at Psychic Fairs. I read That's... nine people the first day. That's it. You know, I'll tell you what, I've had various people ask me how you start becoming like a full-time astrologer. And it, it, the story is different every time when you talk to someone who does that. But this one is unique. This is this is not a spin on this line of work that I've heard yet. So that's that's really interesting. I, I have to tell you that I kind of feel like you know, and and I say this looking me sideways when I say it. I feel like when you start working in the world of energy, whatever modality it is, whether it's you know developing your psychic ability, I mean, numerologist, working with astrology. When you start working as a as a warrior for the light, and that's how I've always seen it, you know, I've always wanted to use the word ambassador, but ambassador yeah. is just really is really cushy. Yeah. Um, and when you do this work, you you're, you're not cushy. You are a warrior. Yeah. And you know, to be to be 15 and to you know do this work and to get adults to take you seriously, I mean, I literally went to a house party once, where I, I still crack up when I think about it. I will, I, you know, I'm there to read 13 people, 14 people, and the woman opens the door, and her exact words to me were, what are you doing here? I paid you, like, two days ago. 
And I looked at her and I was like, <laughs> excuse me? She's like, I just paid you. She's like, you can't be coming back again. And I'm like, I was like really, really quiet. And then she like looked at me and she goes, oh no, are you John? And I went, I am. And she's like, here's how this is going to work. Hmm. She's like, I thought you were much older. She goes, you're going to come in and you're going to read me. She goes, and if you can't do this, she's like, I'm just going to tell people that you didn't show. Huh. <laughs> so when you do this work, you, 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 are, a, you are a warrior of, of, of raising the vibration, I think, for humanity. Yeah. And, and, and with that comes a, a lot of responsibility. And I think once you're in, like once you're in, you know, you're, you're in. And then you can't not be in. Like it's like yeah. the mafia. It's yeah. like you can't. It's like it's 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 a life of it. You're a lifer. So yeah. when people say that they you know they want to develop their abilities, I don't talk them out of it, but I talk them I talk to them about it in a way that really takes away the glamour yeah. of what they might perceive this. Yeah. Because like there's so many reality shows now that have a supernatural spin, and they're all produced. Yeah, and they're produced in a specific way. It's not about the work. You're right. You're right. And I think, on the one hand, I mean, I think it's imp it's good that we're seeing the growth in that sort of thing. But on the other hand, it's like anything that can be used can be misused. And I think this may be one of the big lessons from Saturn and Capricorn in the next couple of years, is that you know we're going up or we're going down. And, by the way, I intend to drag everyone along with me going up, kicking and screaming if I have to. Um, that's because I have Mars right and Capricorn. I have Mars and Capricorn just like you. So we're going to yeah, drag my, people kicking yeah. and screaming <laughs> into the light. Um, but uh, I, I think this is the, kind of the big important lesson for many of us in the next couple of years is that it's this is important and noble work, but, oh, my God, it is not easy. And, uh, no, and, <laughs> not even remotely easy. And once you start, good luck stopping. And I, you know, like I have somebody that I'm working. I have I have a few people that, you know, behind the scenes, are I'm recognizing their, you know, their coming out story, their coming out energy, and yeah. that's why I, I look at I look at it, and I don't say they're coming out psychic because one of them is probably going to wind up being a healer. Um, you know, one of them is doing, uh, you know, psychic and tarot reading, like. And they're they're and I'm supporting them from afar, but you know embracing them while preparing them for what's going to happen in the everyday human world, and that's the part that people don't get. Yeah. How when the energy when the energy shifts around you and you start living your life by a different kind of perspective, you are that perspective. You don't like it's not a shirt you're putting on that you can change. Yeah. It's your skin. It's who you are. It's how you look at stuff. It's how you make decisions. It's how you experience life, which means people around you will then look at you differently and say, oh, well, you're different. You've changed. You're not the same. Mm -hmm. And a lot of relationships will fall to the wayside yeah. because the person's making a spiritual evolution. Yeah. Um, definitely seeing a lot of that now and definitely more to come. And uh, it, it's kind of, well, it's interesting because this leads into my next question. Uh, when a, a more spiritual light or leading people into the light or however you want to phrase it. Um, I want to talk to you about your transits were happening in 1998. You had your first book out. Uh, you go on yep. Larry King. The switchboard blows up. All of a sudden, you're Mr. Popular. You're like, you're the wow, same you did guy. Your re you really did your research. Uh -huh. I'm very impressed. <laughs> oh, oh, there's more coming yet. Um it's like, okay, so, you know, it's like, this is kind of like, you're basically the same guy, doing the same thing for the same reasons, except all of a sudden, you're all big and famous and stuff. Now, there were certainly transits around that to support that happening, but this was also right around the time of your Saturn return. So, let me ask you, the difference between you and, let's say, 1997, doing your work your way, and then in 1998, 1999, 2000, during your Saturn return, you're still essentially the same guy. You're doing essentially the right. same thing. But all of a sudden, oh my God, is that who's that at the deli? Is that that medium guy? Um, so that was all around your Saturn return. And keeping in mind that even winning the lottery can be incredibly stressful. What I'm wondering, what was your personal adjustment to all of that? 
hide. Yeah. I wanted to hide it. So you understand. Not, that's, that's the God's honest truth. Yeah. You understand yeah, that. I went into hiding. Like, you win the lottery, there's going to be stress. So, in a sense, that's kind of exactly no, what happened. Yeah, I, I, I remember being invited to the Golden Globes, and we went to the Golden Globes party in early 2000, or well, 2000, whatever. Yeah. Might have been early, two, whatever, whatever part of 2000 it was. It was right, right in the beginning of 2000s. And my wife said to me, um, This is all wasted on you. She's like, all of this it is completely wasted on you. She goes, you don't even remotely appreciate any of this, like the red carpet stuff or any of the notoriety or the celebrity. And I laughed and I go, you're right. I go, it's not who I am. I go, I don't identify with it. I don't define myself through it. I said to me, I just want to go, I just want to read. I just want to do my job. Yeah. And on, you know, on the one hand, I mean, let's be honest here, everything that happened to you around then was a very good thing for both you and for mediumship, psychic work in general, but still difficult. Um, yeah. I, uh, people often refer to the Saturn return as a very difficult transit. I don't necessarily like calling them good transits or bad transits. I, I tend to call them more smooth and crunchy. And okay. the Saturn return is real crunchy sometimes. And that's and, and by the way, good on your wife. Let's put in the word for her, shall we? Absolutely. So, next set of transits I want to talk to you about. Uh, 2003, there was this book that came out called The Afterlife Experiments. And it, was, yes. it involved a controlled study, really studying mediumship. And it came to the conclusion that, hey, it's a real thing. And hey, you, John Edward, you're the real deal. Now... I personally, I would like to think that in a better world, everyone would have read this book and said, "Hey, you know what? Maybe we should look into this more." But I'm—you've dealt with some skeptics in your time, so have I. Um, you know how I find it funny how so many skeptics become skeptics because they're reacting against dogma, and they just end up trading one dogma for another. But I'm wondering that all of this time—I'm just curious—transiting Neptune was conjunct your moon. Uh, the moon is the ruler of your ninth house, which has a lot to do with the higher mind, but it's also your life philosophy. I'm curious, during that whole time, the afterlife experiments and what it said should have given a lot more validation to the line of work. And you know how skepticism works. They weren't going to allow that to happen. So I'm wondering, either at that time or in general, have you, have you gotten past your disappointment that most skeptics won't play by their own playbook and pay attention to the evidence? No. You know, I've, I've had a really, really um, foundational definition when it comes to respecting uh, skepticism because I've now peeled it apart okay. because I am skeptical and I think that skeptics shouldn't be called skeptics. Okay. I think those people that you're defining should be called cynics. Ah. And their their philosophy is to be cynical about everything, which kind of comes from a foundation of ignorance with a seasoning of arrogance. That no matter what they see, no matter what dat data they have, their own you know, uh, was it cognitive dissonance or yeah. corroboration bias going on? They're only going to see what they want to see. Yeah. Whereas if their own grandmother showed up in their kitchen and made Sunday dinner for them to the recipe that everybody missed and loved tremendously, they'd be like, no, it was a trick. This didn't happen. I never ate that. Yeah. Like that's their, whereas a skeptical person is going to always question everything. So I want people to be skeptical because I feel like when you question things, it makes you an explorer. Yeah. And when you're an explorer, that means you're seeking that leads to raising your awareness and then you can put that into action. And that's how we evolve. Yeah. So for me, I've, I look at, you know, there's 20% of the population that are non-believers, that are skeptical, cynical people, right? That scares me. Um, then you've got the other 20%, which are the believers, and they believe, you know, in that 20% range, they believe anything and everything. They actually scare me more. And then everybody else falls somewhere in the middle, depending upon their own experiences. So because I had that philosophy, and the, the afterlife experiments wasn't about one book, that that was a that was a span of time for me from like 1999 to probably about 2003 2002 that in that period of time where I did like four different big 
experiments with them. Okay. One that was documented in the H- HBO Life After Life documentary, and then right. you know certain stuff. And then I even brought on to crossing over one of the experiments that we did on the show, which was the silence put the person behind you uh, where you can't see them. And if on crossing over we had celebrities, I actually made them put me out on the stage first and then have the celebrity come out and sit behind me. Good. So I wouldn't have to have that. Yeah, I wouldn't have to have that, you know, oh, hi, how are you? Like, oh, my God, that's this person. Yeah. And I don't really like reading celebrities as it is. So it was really easy. I just treated them like they were regular people, like I was doing a phone reading. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I, was I sad that, that there wasn't more? No, I actually pulled out of it at that time because I felt like I was so into it okay. that it could have taken me off path. Like, okay. I could have wound up in the lab, you know, for years just putting my ability to, to use there. And then I thought, you know, it's important that that laboratory rotate through other people to increase their data, to look at different stats, different people read different ways, and then this way, it wouldn't be looked at like the laboratory, the university, the scientists were in cahoots with any one or two specific mediums. Yeah, and uh, that that whole the whole process you just described is very much in line with that Neptune transit over your ninth house ruler, where it's sort of like you were participating in a a larger, in some ways, you're participating in a larger, more philosophical movement. But then you kind of found your own way through it and thought, you know. Eh, I've done my bit, but I'm still going to stay who I am. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Um, now, honest to God, three more questions. That's all. Not going to take <laughs> up all day. First of all, uh, this one, this is one's getting a little more into the future, so we'll see. Uh, in late nineteen, late late twenty nineteen, early twenty twenty, upcoming, there's this Saturn Pluto conjunction in Capricorn. Uh, that now in your case it's going to be uh, closely conjunct your Mars, and that's the ruler of your sixth house, which is work habits. Now I, I don't know uh, how far ahead you plan these things or your career or anything like that, but I'm just curious offhand, do you know of anything you have in mind from like late 19, 2019, early 2020 coming up that might somehow represent a major shift in your career or how you do your work? Or are you just going to kick it all and follow your dream of becoming the world's greatest bagpipe player? Uh, what I'm saying here <laughs> is that <laughs> there, is, there is a big thing as far as your work and career coming up. Do you yourself have any idea yet what that is? Or is that something you're planning on now? Um, well, I've... I, I, now, how, I, this is hard because I don't know if it's a hope, um, but... I left television in 2008 because I felt like been there, done that. Mm-hmm. Like I did two separate shows and I didn't feel challenged. Okay. And so kind of in the same way that I felt with the laboratory, I felt the same way there. And I was like, I want to, I want to go pioneer this online. So I left TV. Okay. Um, and when they didn't want me to, they wanted another three seasons of that show. And I said, thank you, but no, thank you. I want to go do this online. And I did it at a time where I think maybe, Porn was the only thing people were paying for <laughs> online in some capacity. And I, I just was like, no, I, I want to not answer to anybody. And yeah. everybody told me that I was crazy, you know, and they said, you, you're, you're making a big mistake because, you know, you belong on TV and people aren't going to migrate to the Internet and all of that kind of stuff. And I said, maybe not for a while. I said, but I want to be online. I said, I want to I want to control the narrative of what I'm teaching. On crossing over, I wasn't allowed to use the word psychic you know, in advertising. Um, yeah, on crossing over, it's like they wouldn't let me do anything else except do readings and mm-hmm. talk. Which, I, I, okay, great. It was a great experience, but you know what? I did that for four years. Then when I did cross country, I did the same thing while I traveled across the country and did follow ups and a little bit more teaching. But by nature of who I am, I'm a teacher. I want to. I want to educate people, not so that they go become psychics, but that I can keep them better than I found them and I can make a difference in their lives. And being online, I'm able to have like an astrologer like yourself come on and say, and do exactly what you're doing. Like here's this period of time between 2018 and 2020, and here's how it's going to affect all of us as a whole, as a community, and now here's how it's going to affect 
you know, all the people that are Libras, all the people who are, you know, Aries, all the yeah. people who are Capricorns. So if I did that on TV, it wouldn't be syndicated maybe for months or years. Yeah. That, that aspect might pass. So the timeliness of it brought me online. So I've been like for a decade now building an online kind of like network, an online kind of community that's worldwide and has now been thinking about going back to television okay. to kind of create a hybrid of both. Maybe that's it. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe you could, t maybe you could tell me by looking I, at my chart. Like, I, it, yeah. I think there is something like that. And I mean, keeping in mind that like, even when you got that reading when you were 15, that reader may have nailed it, but there's no way she was going to look you in the eye and say, there's this thing called the internet coming and you're going to be on that one day too. Um, right. Because the, right. the future is big and complicated. Okay. Um, in your case, this is going to have like a, a big shift on specifically your work habits, how you do your day. Okay. So I think what you're describing is maybe some kind of internet TV hybrid, but in all honesty, it may be something you and I haven't even thought of yet because that's how the world works now. Um, and I will right. tell you, I will tell you that, but particularly like the tail end of 2019, 2020, um, there's going to be a lot of stress on you, going to be a lot of balls in the air. Um, and that kind of implies to me a major big thing that maybe no one has really done before. So in other words, I think all the transits support what you're saying where you think it might be going. Um, and certainly I think the tone of it is going to be that. But at a point like this, with everything, with the world evolving and changing so rapidly around us, I think you've got a good sense for the direction. And if I had, you put a gun to my head and say, what's it going to be? I'm going to say, yeah, it's that. With the warning that the world is rapidly evolving. And I mean, it's like I said, it's going to be stressful, but it's going to be real good and real productive. Good. That sounds, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm all for being productive. I'm not a lazy person when it comes to working. You know, I, and I, I get bored really easily. I don't know what you can see in my chart that tells me why I get bored. Like, yeah. if I, I have to do different things. So I can't just do private readings. I can't just do groups. Like, I like to teach. Like, I have to, I have to have a lot of stimulation. So even if I'm doing read, even in my readings in the same day, I have to change up how I enter a person's energy. That's now. See, that's a combination of your Mars and Capricorn which once you get focused on a goal has a certain uh, Terminator-like quality to it. And uh, it's also getting a square from Jupiter, <clears throat> which not only just amplifies it, but, you know, honestly, just uh, if, let's say, tomorrow we abducted you and dropped you on a desert island and no one knew you were there, by the time they discovered you three years later, you would have probably found a way to build your own home and possibly your own TV station. Just because once you get focused on a goal, there's nothing going to stop you. So remind me to never stand in your way, all right? I might need a copy of this for people around me. I'm going to be like, uh, just listen to this, please. Oh, oh yeah. Well, you, you, you sit everyone down and you make them listen to the podcast when it's up. And um, so uh, just uh, two more questions. They're really, in, in my part, maybe more personal questions more so than anything else. First sure. of all, I think I think... I think you owe it to your fans to clear something up right now. Is there any truth whatsoever to the rumor that you are, in fact, a big fan of the Netflix series Sense8? Huge fan. Matter of <laughs> fact, sitting on my couch next to me, I have two pillows that one of my, um, you know, employers, I can't say employers, but, like, you know, I say friend, um, somebody I work with, literally gave me as a holiday present, like, these two huge pillows that have all the characters on it. Right on. Sense8? Yeah. I, yeah, I don't like when people use their public persona to complain about stuff like yeah. at an airline or when somebody's like, I'm not that person. But when Netflix canceled the show, I was like, oh, my God, I'm that person. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like, what are you, crazy? It's like, no, it's an amazing show that I feel like everybody should watch. Absolutely. Um, you know, even though there's some salty segments in it, which I think makes it even better. There's, but the, yeah. I, 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 I just think that at where we're at on the planet and with the cultural division that's taking place, that show represents 
humanity and in- inclusivity and I, I i love it so yeah no secret it's it's a really there's a really beautiful message to it and uh, and by the way in case anyone asks everyone has their favorite character over here team leto okay just saying um so how about you i you know i knew you're gonna ask me that and i'm like <laughs> oh my god don't ask me i have a i have a hard time because i don't i like them all yeah, so I can't oh, break them apart yeah. and see them. Yeah, I can't see them. I love Leto's story. I think Leto's story was really, really told beautifully. Um, but I love the, um, I forget their names, the, the Indian pharmacist, the oh, yeah. uh, uh, chemist. Call, uh, and I the, love um, her story. Yeah, the German guy. <laughs> yep. I want to uh, say Max. Uh, um, yeah. I, think that, I think that's the actor's real name. Yeah. But um, I, I feel like their... I think their story um, shows people how you can break free and break out of, you know, she's breaking out of this role that she's supposed to be born into yeah. and he's born into a role and she's showing him how he can evolve out of it. So like I found that, I love that juxtaposition. And, and I think it's kind of a big important message for the world right now is that these people are all connected more than they realized and they're all facing challenges, and yet somehow together they're getting through it. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I was just actually in in South Africa, and when I landed in South Africa, I was like, I want to see Van Damme. Yeah. <laughs> I I would I would I, yeah I would take a ride on that bus, no question. I and now finally finally one last question. Uh, this is just strictly personal. This is honestly something I've always wondered about. And I'm willing to bet that you know more about this than I do, okay? Is that I've seen when you're talking to people, when you're discussing matters of people who have crossed over, I've seen what it does for people when you're talking to them about that as far as emotionally what it does for them, okay? Um, It's making their world a better place and bringing them a lot of peace, a lot of comfort, and it does them a lot of practical good, too. But I find myself wondering sometimes, does it do anything for the dead people involved? What I think any, it does. Yeah, okay. Um, any idea what? And, and um, well, we I, I feel like what what it does what it does for them is it gives them the opportunity to. Okay, so I'm going to give you a good analogy for your listeners. Um, if someone is at sleepaway camp, if you have kids that are at sleepaway camp mm-hmm. and they're uh, there for six weeks and you can't get to them, but you want to send them a care package to let them know, like, oh. even though I can't be with you, I'm thinking about you all the time oh. and I want to, I want to send you this and whatever this is, whether it be a note, their favorite snack, whatever that thing you send them as a care package when that kid at sleepaway camp who hasn't seen them and is missing home and missing their bed and missing the connectivity to that, there's this immediate plug-in. It's that moment when your, your cell phone is about ready to be totally on its last part of the battery and you plug it in to your, you know, charger that you carry with you and you have a little bit extra, you know, energy that's coming into it. It's that, it's that moment for them as well where they get to be the, the parent in that scenario and they get to make a, make a difference in the pain that their loved ones are going through because they're still in school. If we're here in the physical world, we're still here to learn lessons. We're still working on our spiritual evolution. We're still working on what's coming up for us. And choices and decisions made with grief can sometimes delay lessons from taking place. So when they come through, and I don't mean just in the medium, by the way, but through whether it be the song on the radio or finding patterns and seeing 1111 and finding change and feathers and dragonflies and cardinals and all the various ways yeah. that, you know, they could show up energy wise to imprint our world. Um, and then through an actual reading, it's to, to make us better, to leave us um, better than they found us in that moment. Yeah. And it could really help someone. It could really, really help someone. To watch the lights go on in someone's eyes is the most amazing feeling. It is. And I'm sure you see it when you, when you do you know, a chart for someone, when that person has that breakthrough of understanding 
that period of their life. Like, I honestly, you know, in all the astrologers that I know, I don't know if anybody's ever pointed out so eloquently as you did that the period of time I was doing crossing over, I was going through a Saturn return. Because when people say, you know, how was that for you? I, I literally say to them, not fun. And they were like, really? Because yeah. their perspective, I was on a, you know, hit syndicated television show, a two New York Times bestselling books on one of the nonfiction list and one of the fiction list. And I was kind of miserable, to be honest. Yeah. And my wife literally said to me at the time, maybe you're one of those people who can't handle success. Maybe you're one of those people who need to have, you know, like go see a therapist or something. I'm like, no. I go, it's just the energy is overwhelming. It's like it was yeah. absolutely overwhelming. So in hindsight, I could look back now on that and really celebrate what it accomplished. But I could put myself right back in the moment and just be standing in that studio and all the craziness that's going on you know, sitting at a restaurant and looking over and seeing my, seeing somebody literally open up the New York Post and there's a photo of myself and the art director of the New York Post painted on horns of pitchfork and a devil's tail mm -hmm. and the title of the article was, Is This Man Satan? Uh, like, I remember that clear as a bell going yeah. like, oh my God. And if anybody listening thinks that, like, you know, today the crazy Christians were, you know, are, are crazy, cra like, you know, they're outspoken crazy, but then they were quietly crazy yeah and that that was like a that was like putting a bullseye on my life that was a huge the death threats that came out oh. the stuff that i that i had kind of experienced behind the scenes during that period of time was so stressful from from crazy crazy people oh crazy crazy so yeah crunchy how about extra crunchy extra crunchy yeah definitely and uh, it's and that's that's often the nature of a saturn transit especially the saturn return is that, you know, well, in your case specifically, you had to put up with all that crap, but I'm, you know, even today, uh, you know, because of it, like a lot of people who do readings for a living, it's like, oh my God, this is such a drag, and a bunch of people think I'm terrible and or possessed, but then you do the reading, you get the results, you make someone's life a better place, and it's like, oh yeah, that's why I'm doing this. And, right. uh, you but even like with the yeah. with the rise of with the rise of other people, even on TV, doing mediumship work. Yeah. When they when they don't get attacked in the same way that I've got attacked, uh, it's a very different level of attack. It's yeah. Like it's tremendously different. The and I sit back and I go, pioneer. Well, it's interesting. It's just it's an interesting thing to 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 watch, where and anyway. So I'm sure it's in the chart somewhere. Oh yeah, it's there. And uh, again, back to your Mars and Capricorn. That's because you had the, as we call it in the psychic world, cojones to handle it. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't realize the psychic term. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Psychics invented Spanish. Um, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so, is there is there anything else you want? Where where should people be looking for you? Um, you know what? Everything I do is on johnedward.net, and like I said, you know, well, apparently they should be looking for me in 2019 or 2020 to see whatever is going to come out, but whatever that is, That's the um, next we'll all be, like, watching. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that will, it'll be inter interesting to see, but no, everything I do is uh, on johnedward.net, and I enjoy reading your Twitter feed because I, oh, I like someone who, yeah, no, I like somebody who teaches, and I, I resonate with not um, infotainment but actual real people are educating and, and raising awareness. And I know you had a couple of epic takedowns of some folks there for a while, so that was kind of fun to watch. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I try not to be too combative, but it happens. <laughs> but, no, it's, I think it's important because, like I said, more people have come out, you know, psychic um, in the last decade, and I'm sure that there's some level of, you know, generational planets that are making kids more intuitive and open and yeah. it has to do with you know how they process information in, in the in the digital age as well everything's so quick and fast and it probably makes it easier for them to be able to process it um energetically as well but i think that with this quick and sudden world there are certain things that as we evolve that we could be more efficient about and we could be quick and fast and that's great but there are certain things that you can't be fast about and you can't be fast about a lifetime of education and experience. You can't be doing readings for six months and then call yourself a world famous numerologist, astrologer, you know, whatever. You have to pay your dues. And I think yeah. it's really important for people to know that 
when you go make an appointment, when you when you when you're watching someone on YouTube, when you're watching someone on TV, or quite honestly, even if they're reading their book, that does not make them a good person. That does not make them mm-hmm. coming from the right place with intentions. That does not make them ethical. Mm-hmm. That does not. That makes them ambitious. Um, that they were able to, you know, put that out there. So I, 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 I admire when I see done on Twitter while educating, um, and, you know, I don't, know, I don't want to name names because I don't want to give any any credence to anybody. But like going after people that are are not uh, professional in, in what they do. Yeah, yeah, and thank you by the way. And uh, oh, and you're and, welcome. And of course, hey, you know, if you ever feel the need for a reading, I know a guy. Drop me a line, okay? But uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I might have to. I might have to. You have to like navigate my nineteen, my the 2019, 2020 for me. It's like, well, you know, if nothing else, drop me a line then when things are going nuts, and I'll say, I told you. Now let's figure out what's going on next. <laughs> so it's been, you know what? It's been fantastic talking to you. Hey. Let God bless you and yours. Same. And uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Wasn't that great? Uh, you get the feeling you'd like to hang out with them, you know, but that interview to me, if nothing else, is proof that uh, whether you're famous or whether you're not, when we all get up in the morning, we all put our aura on one chakra at a time. Hope you can all drop by again next time. Like I said, if you're listening on Blog Talk Radio, there's a button you can push to get notifications when future episodes come out. If you're listening on YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel and make sure you write me for information on readings and a free copy of my ebook, 12 Signs of Love. The email address is astrologyshow at gmail.com. Hope you can all drop by next time when my special guest, this is also very exciting, my very special guest next time will be intuitive astrologer, writer, and seer Susan Grace, and we'll be building a better future with her. That sounds like something you should listen to, isn't it? So anyway, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what sign you are, no matter what, always remember, good night, Susan, I love you. Thank you.